Hello, everyone. Welcome to part five of our series on NLU and IR. The screencast will be the third among three of our videos on neural IR. In the previous screencast, we discussed learning term weights as a paradigm for building neural IR models that are both efficient and effective. We mentioned two such models from the IR literature, DeepCT and Dr. Query, both of which, despite outperforming BM25 in MRR, still left a very large margin to the quality that we see in, with BERT. We asked ourselves, can we achieve high MRR and low computational cost at the same time? Can we do better? To answer this question, let us begin exploring more expressive paradigms for efficient neural IR. The next paradigm here is the representation similarity paradigm. In the representation similarity paradigm, we begin by tokenizing the query and the document. And we feed each of them independently through an encoder, like BERT, for example. This encoder is then used to produce a single vector representation for the query and for the document separately. So for BERT, we could take this through the class token, for example, and take the output embeddings. Or we could average all the final layer outputs. Once we have those, we finally calculate the relevance score of this document to our query as a single dot product between two vectors. This paradigm is very efficient for retrieval. First, each document can be represented as a vector offline. And this pre-computed representation can be stored on, on disk before we even start um, conducting search. Moreover, the similarity computation between a query and a document here is very cheap and thus very efficient, as it's just a single dot product between two vectors. A very large number of IR models are representation similarity models. Many of those actually precede BERT, like DSSM and SNRM. But the last year and a half, we've seen numerous similarity models based on BERT for IR tasks including SBERT, ORCA, DPR, DBERT, and ANSI, among others. Many of these models um, were actually proposed concurrently with each other. And their primary differences lie in the specific tasks that each one targets and the supervision approach each one suggests. So let us delve deeper into a representative and one of the earlier and most popular uh, models among those. This is the Dense Passage Retriever, or DPR, by Carbokin et al which appeared at EMNLP just a few months ago. DPR encodes each passage or document as a 768 dimensional vector and similarly for each query. During training, DPR produces a similarity score between the query and a positive passage, so that's the relevant passage we wanted to retrieve, as well as between the query and a few negatives. Um, some of them are sampled from the BM25 top 100 and others are in batch negatives which are actually positives, but for other queries in the same training batch. Um, once DPR has all of those scores during training, it then optimizes a classification loss, namely N-way classification loss with soft, uh, cross entropy loss with softmax over the scores of one positive and all of these negatives with the target of selecting the positive passage, of course. DPR was not tested on the MS Marco dataset by the original authors. A subsequent work by uh, Chiang et al. tests a DPR-like retriever on MS Marco and achieves 31% MRR. They also then suggest more sophisticated uh, approaches for supervision, which can increase this MRR by a couple of points. So both of these demonstrate considerable progress over the learned term weight models that we looked at before, like DeepCT or Dr. Query but they still substantially trail behind BERT's much higher effectiveness. So why is that? As it turns out, representation similarity models suffer from two major downsides when it comes to IR tasks. First are their single vector representations, which involve cramming each query and each document into one rather low dimensional vector. Second is their lack of fine-grained interactions during matching. Representation similarity models estimate relevance as one dot product between two vectors. And thus they lose the term level interactions between the query terms and the document terms 
that we had in query document interaction models like BERT. In fact, even simple term weighting models like BM25 or DeepCT had by design some element of term level matching there that we lose here. So our next natural question then becomes, can we obtain these efficiency benefits of pre-computation that we get from representation similarity models while still keeping the fine-grained term level interactions that we used to have before with a model like BERT or DeepCT? Toward answering that question, I think it helps to review the neural IR paradigms we've seen so far. On the left-hand side, we looked at the learned term weights paradigm. These models offered independent, independent encoding of queries and documents, which was great for efficiency, but they forced us to work with a bag of words query that loses all context, and thus were not as competitive as we wanted them to be. We then explored the representation similarity models, which also allowed us to compute independent encodings of queries and documents, which again was really useful for efficiency. But this time, we were forced to work with single vector representations, and we lost our fine-grained term level interactions, which we intuitively believe to be very useful for matching in IR tasks. On the right-hand side, we looked initially, actually, at the query document interaction models like standard BERT classifiers. These offered very high accuracy, but were extremely expensive to use because the entire computation for one document depended on both the query and the document. We simply couldn't do any pre-computation, in this case, offline in advance. So can we somehow combine the advantages of all these three paradigms at once? Before we answer that question, there's actually one final feature, uh, one final capability of the first two paradigms that we should discuss. So query document interaction models, which are quite expensive, they forced us to use a re-ranking pipeline. This is a pipeline where we rescored the top 1,000 documents that we already retrieved by BM25. Sometimes that's OK. But in many cases, this can be a problem because it ties our recall to the recall of BM25, which is ultimately a model that relies on finding terms that match exactly across queries and documents. And so it can be quite restrictive in many cases. When recall is an important consideration, we often want our neural model that we trained to do end-to-end -end retrieval. That is, to search quickly over all the documents in our collection directly without a re-ranking pipeline. Learning term weights and representation similarity models that we've looked at so far alleviate this constraint. And this is a big advantage for them. So specifically, when we learn term weights, we can save these weights in the inverted index, just like with BM25. Um, and that allows us to obtain fast retrieval. When we learn vector representations, it also turns out that we can index these vectors using libraries for fast vector similarity search like FACE, F-A-I, double S. This relies on efficient data structures that support pruning, which is basically finding the top K matches, say the top 10 or the top 100 matches, without having to exhaustively enumerate all possible candidates. The details of search with these pruning data structures is beyond our scope, but it's really useful to be aware of this important capability for end-to-end -end retrieval. OK, so let's go back to our last main question. Can we obtain the efficiency benefits of pre-computation while still having the fine-grained term-level interactions that we used to have? The neural IR paradigm that will allow us to do this is called late interaction. And this is something that I've worked on here at Stanford. So let's build late interaction from the ground up. We'll start, as usual, with tokenization of the query and the document we'll seek to independently encode the query and the document, but into fine-grained representations this time. So as you can see on the left-hand side, this is actually not hard. As it's shown, um, we can feed two copies of BERT, the query and the document separately, and keep all the output embeddings corresponding to all the tokens as our fine-grained representation. 
for the query and for the document. Okay, so we're only going to be done here once we actually close this loop, right? We still need to estimate relevance between this query and that document. Essentially, we have two matrices and we need a notion of similarity between these two matrices or these two bags of vectors. However, not every approach will suffice. We insist that we get a scalable mechanism that allows us to use vector similarity search with pruning um, to conduct end-to-end -end retrieval at a, in a scalable fashion across the entire collection. In doing this, um, or for doing this, it turns out that a very simple interaction mechanism offers both scaling and high quality. So here's what, we're, what we'll do. For each query embedding, um, as I show here, we compute a maximum similarity score across all of the document embeddings. So this is just going to be a cosine similarity, um, giving us a single partial, partial score um, for this query term, which is the maximum cosine similarity across all of the blue embeddings in this case. We'll repeat this here for all the query embeddings and we'll simply sum all, the, all of these maximum similarity scores um, to get our final score for this document. So we will refer to this general paradigm here as late interaction and to this specific model shown here um, on top of Bert S. Colbert. And the intuition is simple. For every term in the query, we're just trying to softly and contextually locate that term in the document assigning a score to how successful this matching was. Um, let me illustrate this with a real example from the MS Marco ranking development set, and I hope it will be quite intuitive once you see it. Um, at the top is a query, and at the bottom is a portion of the correct passage that Colbert retrieves at position one. Because we have this simple late interaction mechanism, um, we can actually explore the behavior. And we can see in this particular example, that Colbert matches um, through maximum similarity operators, the word when in the question with the word on in the phrase on August 8th, which is a date um, as we might expect. It matches the word transformers with the same word in the document. It matches cartoon with animated and it matches the individual words come and out with the term released um, when in, in, in the phrase it was released on August 8th. Um, um, in the document, as we might intuitively expect. So we're basically just trying to contextually match these query terms um, in the document and assign some matching score for each of these terms. So notice here and, and remember that Colbert represents each document as a dense matrix of many vectors, and in particular, one vector per token. And that this differs from the representation similarity models we looked at before, um, which tried to cram each document into one vector. And what makes this possible is the maximum similarity um, um, operators um, that we have on top of these uh, matrix representations. So how well does Colbert do? And how does it do with this gap that we have here between efficient models and highly effective ones? Well, by redesigning um, the model architecture and offering a late interaction paradigm, Colbert allows us to achieve quality competitive with BERT at a small fraction of the costs. Perhaps more importantly, Colbert can scale to the entire collection due to pruning with end-to-end -end retrieval, um, all 9 million passages here in, in, in this case, um, while maintaining sub-second latencies. Um, and thus it allows much higher recall than traditional re-ranking pipelines permit. All right, so, so far we've looked at in-domain effectiveness evaluations basically cases where we had training and evaluation data for the IR task at hand, which was MS Marco so far. But we often want to use retrieval in new out of domain settings. We just want to throw our search engine um, at a difficult problem without training data, without validation data and, and see it perform well. Um, we briefly discussed BR before, um, which is uh, a recent effort to test IR models in a zero shot um, setting where the models are trained on one IR tasks, a task and then they're fixed and then they are tested on a completely different um, uh, set of tasks. 
Uh, Beer includes 17 IR datasets under nine different um, uh, IR tasks or scenarios. And the authors, Nanda and Ital, compared a lot of the IR models that we discussed today in a zero-shot manner against each other across all of these tasks. So let's take a look. Um, here we have BM25 uh, results, results for an interaction model, which is in this case Electra, um, which tends to perform slightly better than BERT for ranking. We have two representation similarity models, DPR and SBERT, um, and we have a late interaction model, which is Colbert. Um, the best um, in each row, in each IR task, is shown in bold. And we see that across all tasks, the strongest model at NDCG at 10 um, is always one of the three models that involve term level interactions, which are Electra, Colbert, and BM25. Interestingly, the single vector approaches, which seemed quite promising so far, fail to generalize robustly according to these results. Whereas Colbert, which is also a fast model, almost matches the quality of the expensive Electra ranker. The results so far were on the metric NDCG at 10, which is a precision oriented metric, looks at the top results. Um, but here I have the author's results um, um, after the task level aggregation, um, considering recall at 100. Um, and here, although we see that, 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 that you know, the, the results are, are, are rather similar uh, when we consider recall, um, but one major difference is that Colbert's late interaction mechanism, which allows it to conduct end-to-end -end retrieval uh, with high quality, allows it to achieve the strongest recall in this case. Um, and so we can conclude basically that scalable fine-grained interaction is key to robustly high recall. Uh, of course, notice that the BM25 and Electra recall here um, is the same, since Electra just three scores the top 100 in this case from BM25. Um, so this concludes our neural IR section of the NLU plus IR series. Um, in the next, next screencast, we will discuss how scalability um, with these retrieval models can actually drive large gains in quality, not just speed, uh, which we haven't seen so far except on the recall case, um, and how tuning a neural IR model fits into a larger downstream open domain NLU task.